Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time out this evening to join this webinar. Uh, really appreciate it. Today, I have Chanel uh, from FCRN Clinical Trial Center. Uh, as you would know that last week, we were celebrating International Clinical Trials Day and uh, FCRN ran a campaign in their community actually. And she will be taking us through the activities that they got up to. Um, last week during International Clinical Trials Day. Uh, Chanel is the managing director of and founder of FCRN. And without wasting any more time, uh, Sharon, Chanel, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, please remember that you can um, give comments or ask questions at the end of the session. And we are more than happy to have this conversation and interact and take it further. Thank you, Chanel, over to you. Thank you so much for this and hosting this and giving us the opportunity and the platform to share what we did last week with uh, International Clinical Trials Day. If we can just move to the next slide. So FCRN Clinical Trials, so, uh, Clinical Trials Center in association with Pharmos collaborated on the 20th of May to celebrate International Clinical Trials Day. So here's a picture of our team. We've got our investigators, we've got our in, um, finance department, we've got our nurses, we've got our operational director and our pharmacist as well as Johannes from Pharmos. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So during when we, being aware that it is International Clinical Trials Day, we were all brainstorming and we thought, what can we do not only to build our database, but also to give back to the community that we serve. So we decided to give back to the community by offering a free healthcare assessment that included blood pressure, pulse, cholesterol, heart, weight, and more. So we, we did additional pregnancy tests and for, any of the patients that were there during the day and they had high blood pressure or anything like that, our investigators then gave them a referral letter back to their clinics with detailing if there's any additional health care needed. This also gave FCR in the opportunity to create awareness regarding clinical trials and build our database for future and current studies. So during the day, 63 people were screened and checked by our team members. During the week leading up to the day, we used our local media to create awareness and placing advertisements in our newspapers and our community radio station. After each assessment, the community was treated with a hot cup of soup and fresh rolls. Next slide, please. So Carol was there and she represented uh, SACRA and FCR in our team members also took the health checks just to make sure that we are also as healthy and fit as our patients. Next slide, please. Okay, so after we serve the community, FCRN and Formos hosted a cheese and wine for the do local doctors and healthcare workers. So that was from six to seven. And we invited everybody. We didn't just focus on the doctors. We also invited nurses, our wound care clinic um, staff, everybody in the area, um, just to create awareness on what we do and what we have. Next slide, please. Our guest speakers included Johannes from Farmos, detailing the role of a SMO company in the industry. Carol discussing the SACRA role and Dr. Marengo, one of our investigators, providing an overview of FCRN and any recruiting studies. Next slide, please. Celebrating International Clinical Trials Day by hosting a community outreach and an information session for the local medical workers allowed FCRN and Pharmos to give back to the community, build a database and network with our local doctors and medical staff. It was very successful. Um, FCRN being the first clinical trial site in the World Triangle, serving a research naive community and bringing research to doctors and healthcare workers that was also research naive. This gave us a, a broader variety of, of information and doctors and patients by doing this. Next slide, please. As okay, so FCRN Clinical Trial Center, we'd like to thank Pharmos in 
on collaborating with us to making this day very successful and all our team members for your time and efforts and contrib that contributed to this day being successful. Victor, thank you for hosting this webinar and allowing us to share our story. Thank you all for attending. I don't know if there's any questions or comments. Thank you so much, um, Chanel. And I think this was very, um, you know, something that all sides maybe should look at. And from your presentation, I could tell that not only did you target uh, the participants, but you also looked at other relevant stakeholders like um, hospitals, um, staff, uh, because at the end of the day, when you have issues, you want to obtain medical records, you want to have a good relationship with these uh, other stakeholders. So I think you had a very successful um, um, event and uh, I wanted uh, to find out uh, before we move on to uh, our attendees, if they have any comments or questions to find out, maybe just to give us experience, your experience on uh, starting this new clinical trial site in a you know, clinical trial naive community. How has it been challenging for you and how did you um, overcome those challenges? Thank you for the question, Victor. And that's, that's actually very insightful and, and a very good question. Um, our biggest challenge was to actually find investigators that would be interested in, you know, taking this this role on and and getting the the knowledge and experience to be able to participate and then eventually become principal investigators and sub investigators. So I think that was our biggest challenge, which we have overcome by creating awareness and. Communication. I think communication is the biggest role and the biggest factor and our, our biggest weapon that we have on our side and to share our knowledge that we've got. I mean, I've been in the in the industry for almost 10 years now. So in different roles from site to CRO to um, lead roles. So with sharing that knowledge and bringing it to the table and showing people that you know, clinical trials is not just about um, what is that being a lab rat. That is that that was the most common comeback that we had. But to share that, you know, the insightfulness and and the the red tape that we've got to follow and the the strict guidelines that we followed doing this was very insightful to a lot of people. And I mean, we now have on our staff we've got two general practitioners, we've got a general surgeon as uh, one of our investigators, as well as a specialized physician that is playing roles either as a principal or sub investigator. And then also just educating the community and showing them that you're not just a number, making them part of your family and showing them that, you know what, you're not just a number to us, we don't just use and abuse and throw you away, we actually care and we we go that extra mile to follow up with you and find out how you're doing and how's your family doing. You know, it's it's small things like that that do make a big difference to um, the participants and their families. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, and I think just making the participants feeling more than just uh, a patient or a subject to a clinical trial helps with the retention of these participants onto the studies as well, which works well for you as a site. Um, just gonna take it over to the floor. If there's anyone with a comment question, you can just unmute yourself. Okay. Looks like there isn't anyone. I have one last question and you are doing something very um, important, uh, which contributes to capacity building. And that is introducing new investigators or um, general practitioners to clinical trials. And that is very interesting. And that's something that we are looking at. The question is, you know, when you get somebody that is new to clinical trials, you know, so many regulations, and you, I know you have an eye for quality. Um, how do you, you know, manage that? Introducing somebody uh, who's new to uh, clinical trials, but who is an expert in their field. Uh, I mean, you say you have a neurosurgeon working uh, at the site. So how do you navigate through, to, through that? 
So what our approach is open communication and the open door policy. So if they come and they, they are experts and we treat them as the experts that they are in their field, respective field, it doesn't matter where it is because I might be known in the field and I might have the knowledge in the field, but I don't have the knowledge that the doctors have in their field. So combining their knowledge and our knowledge and you know, building their character on their strengths and building and showing them that, yes, that what you do on a day-to-day -day basis is very good and it's very important and you need to tap into that knowledge, but you need to learn what we do and how we need to navigate around, or not navigate, but to follow strict rules and regulations. Training is very, very important. Um, training and, and having SOPs in place and, you know, just being able, having them, being there for them and, and guiding them and, and showing them that this is the road to, you know, let's not take sh shortcuts. I think that is the, the biggest lesson that we can teach is do not take shortcuts. Let's rather do it the long way around. Let's acknowledge if we made a mistake, which is fine. We all make mistakes. But let's put cappers then in place and we don't repeat the mistakes that we, we have. So your corrective and preventative actions are very, very important. That's very fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Chanel. And one last time to the floor, if there's a comment or question, please just unmute yourself before we wrap it up. Okay, you're going once. Twice, Carol? Yes, um, so it's Carol and I represented Sacra. So I had the opportunity to be with FCRN and farmers on that day. And I would just like to comment that it was actually amazing to see what they were doing, what they were doing for the community and having investigators and doctors join them. Um, it was great to see the interest in the doctors in the VAL. I think they will have a couple of doctors joining them in the near future and educating them on clinical trials. Yeah, thank you so much for that contribution, uh, Carol, and for also representing Sakra at the event that uh, FCRN was hosting. And I do think uh, maybe this is an opportunity for you to Chanel to move on to other communities. Uh, it's a challenge that I'm posing to you in the you know, nearer future. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just, we would just like to say from our side as well, Carol, thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know how busy you are and being there and, you know, just building us and, and giving us pointers on where we can also build and grow going forward. We really appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Um, and for everyone that's tuning in, I will be sharing this presentation on LinkedIn. Uh, the recording will also be uh, available on YouTube from next week. You can just... If you missed the early parts, you can um, maybe just tune in. I see Sito has uh, unmuted himself. Do you want to say something? Okay, I think that was a mistake. All right, thank you so much. Hi, hi, oh, hi, Sito. Um, is this Sifiso or Sito speaking? No, no, it's uh, Sifiso. All right, Sifiso, Sifiso speaking, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, so so uh, thanks for the for the presentation. Uh, I guess um, my, right. my question or, or, or which I would like to ask is um, we, we assume the, 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 the research industry is, is a, it seems as if it's a very hidden industry. Uh, many people are not aware but yet there are so in many meters, interventions turn right. that are happening uh, within uh, our country that end up affecting uh, the very communities that are naive to clinical turn right. research. Then so your destination will what, be on the left. What can we do to, to, to actually uh, cast a wider net uh, in informing our communities about clinical research. In 100 meters, turn left. Safisa, thank you for your, your question. And, and it's very valid what you said. 
one of the we had our local radio station there for the day and one of the questions posed to me during one of the interviews was is clinical trials big in south africa um you know the world being so child naive um i think what we should strive to do as clinical trial centers and as as managers and as people the people that have the knowledge is to actually host more events like this because not only are we building our database for trials going forward or, or trials happening at the moment, but we are also creating awareness and we're showing people that, you know, we we are caring medical qualified people doing the research and our sites are open to people to come in and even if you are having an adverse event, you can feel comfortable in phoning us. So I think creating and, and doing events like this and having community outreach on a more regular basis and not just keeping it to either cl international clinical trials day or anything like that but you know collaborating and say guys okay let's do this in this community every two months um, will have a huge huge impact and also communicating with with the doctors because they also have and not um, and not just focusing on the private sector but also going to the public sector because that's where our main patient population lies yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I mean, with COVID last year, um, I think we did uh, raise awareness about clinical trials, but it's not every community that had the luxury to experience um, a, a clinical trial or a, a COVID-19 clinical trial in their uh, community. So yeah, very important what you mentioned. It's Adriana. very, very, very um, important what you said there, Victor, is clinical trials did come to the forefront now with, with COVID, but everybody thinks it's just COVID related that the mm. clinical trials are happening. Because yeah. you know, everybody is so focused on COVID, which is understandable. I mean, COVID changed our lives. I mean, we opened the site on the 1st of March last year, and then the big lockdown <laughs> happened. So if anybody felt the brunt of COVID, it was us. But, mm. you know, we need to create that awareness that it's it's not just related to COVID. You know, we can help you in any any therapeutic area that you need and and reaching out to the CRO companies and saying to them look we've got this patient population pre please bring the studies to us and we can we can take this so much further and and, and do so much more yeah, absolutely uh, thank you Chanel for your time thank you everyone that joined this webinar today really appreciate your time I want to also acknowledge uh African Pharma Review for making this uh, webinar possible. Um, you can just check them out on LinkedIn and their website. They share information about the latest news, clinical trials related. You can uh, follow them on LinkedIn. You can also just uh, stay connected with me and uh, keep in touch. If you have any topic of interest that you'd like to present, just let me know. And uh, if you want to sponsor the webinar, you can also let me know. And with that, Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Uh, cheers, and we'll be in touch. Bye.